Good morning and welcome to a unboxing video of super excitement things. Yes. Sometimes I have these little moments in my life where I become very focused on buying antique clothing. I love antique clothing. I love looking at antique clothing. I love studying antique clothing because when you're learning how to sew or to make historic costumes, what better way to learn how to do it than, you know, with the real stuff, right? Right. I was dicking around on Instagram for lack of a better term. And one of my favorite accounts, Witchy Vintage, she posted in her stories a late Victorian ensemble. I slid into her DMs. It arrived last night and I somehow managed to maintain some self-control when it comes to actually opening this box. I was like, oh, well, it'll be fun to do it like on camera and actually get my real reaction, not like my antiques roadshow like <gasps> reaction. It's lived in this box, which kind of makes me a little hinky because I'd prefer it not to be in a cardboard box, but here we are, it's here. I am now going to open it for you guys on camera. But before I do that, I am going to lay out some acid-free tissue paper so that way the dress is nice and safe now that it lives in my house. And now I'm gonna wash my fingies. I'm going to take my box cutter and very, very carefully cut the tape. I don't want it to go in too deep. And usually I brandish a box cutter like it's a knife and I'm in West Side Story and I'm getting ready to go into like a gang fight. Oh! But I'm trying to be responsible and careful. I don't know like what she's done to protect it or anything, so. Oh, pretty. Oh. oh, I have a card. <laughs> oh my God, Paula, thank you. So she writes, Abigail, thank you so much for your purchase and rescuing this beauty. I included a piece I thought you might also enjoy. I had plans to try and repair her, but she's just been in storage for too long. Please let me know if there are any issues with your order. Have a magical day, Paula. Okay, let's start with I think I know what the surprise is, but it, let's start with what I what I bought from her first. That's sticky, and I don't want to risk the bodice hitting that. Okay, I am prepared with crap scissors. All right, I'm just gonna cut this plastic off with the sticky, so that way I don't have to worry about hurting this. For those of you who are not familiar with like clothing conservation protocols, I am not wearing gloves. I was taught not to wear gloves. I was taught to have clean hands when working with textiles. This is in part because when you're wearing like cotton gloves, you can't necessarily feel stress. Being able to feel the fabric and make sure you're not actually stressing like a seam point or, or pulling too hard or pushing too hard. You can't always feel that when you have cotton on your hands. So by operating with clean bare hands, you're in some ways actually being more protective. Just had to get that out there. Cause I could just see people going, oh my God, no! And it's like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I went to school for this, kind of, not conservation. Okay, let me move this baby over here real fast. Oh my goodness! Oh, she, oh wow, oh wow. Okay, okay, here we are. Here we are, look at you, oh my goodness. So she is actually, her silk is actually in really, really good shape. Oh, the silk is lovely, it's very, very shiny, it's very, very luster, lustrous. Oh, she's beautiful. Her cotton, her cotton lining is in great shape. Her silk is in great shape. My favorite thing about this that I saw initially, oh, have the buttons been removed? 
So the buttons have been moved and they didn't bother. This is probably like a thing someone wanted to wear for like a dress up party because they didn't even bother to take out the threads of the original button points. But they did every other, they bought like two packs of buttons. So there's like a plain button and then a decorated button and they're, they're every other one. Oh, they let that out. Oh, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. So when they did this alteration, which actually might have been older than, it might actually be kind of old, they, it looks like they picked out the point where it had originally, the edge had been finished, folded the, no they didn't do it, they just did it this way. Dressmaker, I see you. I see you. Miss, I'm not, I'm just gonna use this selvage edge here, press it back and not care. I see you. Okay, okay, Miss 18th Century. Cutting corners, y'all think they were doing nice stuff. So yes, yeah, so this is on the straight and they just folded the selvage edge back, pressed it and called it good. There, I can't tell if those are tintory marks or stitch marks. There's thread here, so she might've stitched it down. At one point in time, it might've been stitched down. But if this maker is not a woman after my own heart, I don't know who else would be. <laughs> I love a good use of selvage. I will also say very quickly, surprisingly, there is no boning in this bodice. There is not a single bone. There is no evidence of boning being in this bodice at any point in time. This is a boning free bodice, which for the Victorian era, I think is actually very, very cool. It's beautifully finished on the inside. It has two different types of brown cotton. It's not a polished cotton. It's more of like a, like a twill or almost like a satin weave cotton in here. But then another one, it looks like this might've been beetled or a bit polished. So yeah, this is almost like a, yeah, this is like a cotton sateen in here. Okay, so we have three different types of cottons being used. There is a polished cotton for the sleeve. The side piece is out of a matching but different cotton and then the rest of it's out of the same brown uh, cotton. It has, one of the things I loved about this is that the peplum in the back, the skirt in the back is super heavily pleated. And so they have tacking stitches down here to help hold those pleats into place. This is actually, though I can see some corners were, were used to help speed along the process. This is actually a beautifully made bodice. It, it, it's really like just upon the initial impression I can see there's a lot of care that has been taken on this bodice did a good job with it and then the back has gorgeous detailing on the shoulders which I can't wait to kind of dig into that a little bit more because it looks like it's a little bit more complicated than just ruching and they also you can wear point here they put it on top of a of a another fabric oh we have a let out point here so the sleeve was reset on at least on one side yeah on this side so obviously they had a sleeve problem see you guys they didn't have it easier back then when it came to dressmaking they still had problems but overall i think this baby is in great condition the trim and lace is actually in nice condition too i'm not quite worried about it all right i'm gonna move her over to the side so now it's time to open up what i believe should be the skirt Ooh, this has been worn goodness Oh goodness, this skirt has been loved. This skirt has been adored. This skirt does not go with that bodice. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, this is actually a, a silk fail. File, fail, file. Fail. Silk fail. I never can remember how it's pronounced. Uh, sorry guys. Where the bodice is actually a plain silk like taffeta. This is actually a fail. So, which is very exciting because this was actually a really, really common fabric in the late 19th century for dressmaking. It's nice to kind of see how this feels compared to like a taffeta. The skirt's in pretty, pretty delicate condition. There's a lot of tears and holes. The, there's a whole section here that's just falling off. Very, very simple construction from the initial observation. 
then yeah, we got a train. This is obviously supposed to go over either a bustle or a bum pad of some sort. Back is definitely longer than the front. There's no trim on this or anything like that. Gorgeous, okay. So she's gored. So we have shaped skirts. We have some piecing up at the top and just a plain glazed cotton at waistband. It's not silk. This is lined. So we have a glazed cotton facing at the hem. It's also been bound in a wool tape. The hem has at least two layers, two cotton layers, a silk layer, and then the edge has been bound in a wool tape. So that way it helps hold out the body. Oof, this baby is rough. But the nice thing actually kind of about having the this bit come off is you can kind of see a bit better how it's been structed. There's some salvage. Look at that. The skirt has a pocket. I'm very excited. So here it is. Here's the pocket is it's right there. It's a nice deep pocket. Ooh, it's a real deep pocket. Oh, weird. There's like a little like tuck that was taken like near the pocket for some strange reason. Oh, she's so pretty. We got some cartridge pleats up here. They've just been whipped to the waistband. You know, it's amazing how construction of stuff just like doesn't change. Oh, we have another loop. We have loops for hanging. The warp and weft is different on these piecing. They didn't even try to, to like match the lines up. So if you're handling old clothes, it's always good to try and support them. So it's never just like grab and throw like you would with like your t-shirts, but you lift and adjust. It's, it's just like a baby, you know, and try as best as you can. It's not always possible to minimize stress points. This is the mystery surprise from Paula. I'm very excited. Come on. There we go. Okay. You can leave with the tissue paper. Ooh. It has pit tops. This is stunning! Holy shit! Okay, okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's a hook there, and it is hooked, and there are delicate things there, and I don't want to hurt them. This also actually feels more like a file. Fail. File. Whatever. Holy bananas. Holy bananas! This is insane! This is stunning! This is, oh my gosh! I, the, I, I'm literally speechless right now. Like this is just blowing my mind. Oh my God, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh my, it's an amazing condition. I haven't even seen the front of it. Holy crap. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then like, oh, we have the cream silk up here. So it, it's contrast and looks like flesh colored. Oh my God, it's like illusion. Oh my gosh, the finish work on this is so nice. Like I have, I don't have anything in my collection that's this nicely finished. We got boning at all of the seams and the darts. We got hooks and eyes still in place, not moved. Beautiful construction technique. Little bit of wear that needs a little bit of mending. But this thing is in incredible condition. Oh my gosh, and everything is black on the inside. So it's lined in a black cotton as well. This is, holy crap, holy crap. And we have some, some loops that have been stitched to hold obviously the weight of a skirt up. These pin tucks. They're just pen tucks and silk. That's all my god. 
time. So FYI, this fabric was tucked before it was constructed. Tuck it, cut it, sew it. Sounds like a Kanye West song. Oh, this trim is just, oh, it's so cute. It's like little flowers on like the hook side. Oh, there's some tetanus waiting to happen. That's just been stitched on to cover the hook and barb point. This is just a really gorgeous silk organza, silk chiffoni eyelet, like machine done eyelet that's just been like overlaid. There might have been some trim around the edge that's like been worn off or picked off, but you can't, it's not really noticeable. We got some big old sleeves here. So the pin tucking goes all the way around been bloused out like what you see with the pigeon breasts in the Edwardian, like early Edwardian era. And then it just is stitched down here and like the lines of the pin tucking. This would have been stunning on a body. Oh my gosh. This is just wow. Just wow. We got silk gauze trim here at the cuffs. It's very, very fragile. And the tucking, the pin tucks on the sleeves as well, and they also help shape the sleeves. So this is definitely early, because I thought for a second it was gonna be 1890s with like the shape of the sleeves, and I was like, maybe it's kind of like easing its way out, but with this blousiness, I'm thinking that it's 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 early 1900s. The shaping with the pleats and the tucking is giving me a very strong like 1840s feel. Yeah, it really looks like there might've been some extra trim that went around like the neat point for like the eyelet and everything and that it's just been, yeah, you can kind of see like remnants of it. It's been either picked off or it's just worn away, but you can see. So it probably went all the way around and over and I would wager it probably was like that little flower design that's on the back or something similar to what's on the cuff. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I'm just, I'm dumbfounded. I am completely blown away. Oh, okay, cool. It's a fitted sleeve inside the, the fuller sleeve. And then it just goes right into the cuff part. All right, guys, this has been an awesome episode, at least for me, like to unbox all of this really amazing uh, Victorian and Edwardian clothing with you all. You can see I've put the surprise treasure up on my mannequin. She actually doesn't fit it. There's a huge gap in the back, but you can get a really great idea over how she looks, which is incredible. Thank you so much for joining and I uh, hope you all enjoyed this episode. And if you did, like let me know in the comments which out of these three pieces you liked the best and what you want to see more of. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining me. I'm super stoked. Come and find me. Come and find me. I feel like I'm playing like, <laughs> like Pong with the like autofocus and it does not want to find my face even though it's on find your face. It's like actively avoiding my face right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come here, you, come here. No, 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 no. Doing you piece of shit. Come on. <laughs>